scriptures and message said and worship you, Lord. Again, Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come in worship of you, Lord, you, Father, Lord. Please, Lord, may touch our hearts, may bless us, may this meeting be a blessing to our hearts, Lord. And may touch each and every one of us, actually, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, I think we have a video. Is the word, 
that we cannot afford in this great age to stop to listen to anything contrary to this message. Amen. It's so deceptive in this age. I'm going to tell you something. It's going to keep people out of the rapture. I know that offends people, but don't you think that anyone outside this ministry, outside the Jews, no, they're not going to make a rapture. Why would God send a message? If we could have made a rapture without it, why did he send it? Why did he send it? Why did he open the seventh seal? Why did seven angels come down? Why did they bring it open? But why did they open the seventh seal? Why was the mission of God revealed out? If we could have made it without all this, why did God send it? God wasted his time. And if you know more than a problem, why did God send you? Amen, church. Today, in Satan's Eden, this is not God's Eden. This is Satan's Eden. And the worship person in this age is Lucifer. Brother Ben said he's become the worship person in this age. The only look, I got it. Revelation 13, 8, I believe it is. See the Revelation, turn over to Revelation 13, 8 real quick. See the 13, 8 or 17, 8. There it is. And all, A L L, that dwell on the earth shall what? How many? Now, if we stop right there, that means me and you too. Do you think we're worshiping Satan? No. Go no. finish it. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain for the foundation of the world. In other words, there's a people whose names are written in that book that's predestinated not to worship Amen. anything but God. Amen. Amen. And God's grace today brought you by predestination quickened your eternal life, gave you a message, gave you one voice, gave you a husband, gave you a truth, prepared you for the second coming of Christ. Now the message going to change your body. What's done all that? God's grace. And if God didn't do it, it would have never got done. He said, if God would have asked me, I mean, he paints a horrible picture, and then said, if God would ask me what age I would want to live in, I'd have chosen this age. Brother Bradley, you paint such a treacherous picture. But can't you choose this age to live in? He said, yes, because it's this age that the millennium is going to follow. Amen. And he ties us right back. To, I'll show it tonight. Matthew 5. He'll bring Matthew 5 up and say, the meek shall inherit the earth. And the very earth that Adam turned over to Satan to give him something to work with. And he took this earth. And now today, I can show you from Noah, from Moses, right on down to Jesus' time, right on down to the age. All he did in every age was took away the value of God's promised word by explaining it away. Look at all the only thing that Lucifer didn't get that gave us hope was the abstract title deed with back in the hands of the original owner, Almighty God. And he held the book of redemption where your name was written. And all God waited on was a kinsman redeemer to come. We'll get to it tonight. And that's the Lord Jesus. And you realize he never got that book. Satan's built his hands to take that book. And in that book, your name was there. And you were predestined to believe the word. Predestined not to worship Satan. And guess what? The very earth that Satan became a squadron on, your name is written on the abstract title as one who's going to rule and reign over this earth. Amen. You believe that same name? Amen.
Take you away from the state, kid. Picture is always the quality sitting on the suit now. You make me feel bad now. <laughs> Why did you tell us this was the right suit today? Anyway, but I'm supposed to talk about baptism. And the title of my message today is Baptism, the most important decision, the person in this decision is you. It's not even Jesus Christ or anybody, but you are the most important person. Because he did the work already, but it's you who have to recognize that work. And it happens inside of you, and baptism is only an outward show of how you're feeling inside. How many of you all know Brother Wesley? Brother Wesley used to play drums. You all know Brother Wesley? Yes. What team he supported in soccer? Yeah. Why you know that he supported the local? Yes, because how he felt inside, he put it on his car, he wore the shirt, he showed you. So even tomorrow if he supported another team, you'll tell him no. But why are you supporting that team? Aren't you a Liverpool supporter? I've seen the stickers, I've seen you part of the, the Liverpool club he was joined to and all. So you knew his outward show showed who he supported on the inside. And same like that when you get baptized, it's a show how you feel inside about Jesus Christ. That I'm willing to die. That's why we take you and you dump you in the water like you died. We buried you and you rose again. Now that life that you had before, you've given it up and now you've, you've been born again. You, you've taken on Jesus Christ. And when there's your new life. So now, my job today is to show you according in the word why we, how, why we baptize the way we baptize. Because you know in every, you may talk to your friends and family or whatever was Christians and they'll tell you a different way they've been baptized. Some of them, you know, as soon as they went to the church, they get baptized. As soon as they were born, they take the small baby to the front and they baptize the child. Even you saw some videos during COVID time when they were playing games and the pastor put the water in the gun and was spraying the children to see so he didn't want to touch them. And the next slide. So now, this is the rules we follow as message believers. Amen. Okay, we don't baptize little children. As you know, whenever we dedicate small little children, we pray for them, but we won't baptize them. Because it says you must reach an age of accountability. Then we don't sprinkle, don't take a bit of water and sprinkle it on you. We don't baptize in Trinity. We don't baptize Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we don't force people to get baptized. Is that something like I know some churches, as soon as you come, you get baptized. Then only they allow you to come to the church. No, we don't force you to be baptized. You must feel within you, I need to be baptized ever. And they say, we only baptize, and our the things that we follow, we only baptize in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We immerse you completely, and we believe in the age of accountability and the individual's own work with Jesus Christ. Now, if I gave you a gun, any one of you here, would you shoot somebody? Who shoot somebody? If I gave you a gun, you don't like your brother or your sister, shoot them. <laughs> How many of you all, if we left you all at home alone, would you burn the house down? Not by mistake, burn the house down because you didn't know, you're stupid. Because out of stupidity you burn the house. Not mistakenly you were trying to cook something and the house caught on fire. I mean, you you saw matches and you just said, let's see what I can do the match three, but no, you won't burn the house. So that first part of age of accountability, I took all of the out from there. Because if you are comfortable, I can leave you at home, you won't burn the house down, I can give you a pet, you can look after the pet, you can go to school if I tell you, you know what time, you won't wander out from the school uh, without permission, you know certain time you need to go and because your parents will be worried about you. What, so you are comfortable. So they're comfortable, but the individuals own work with Christ. There's where we give you a chance because many people by the age of 9, 10, 11, you are comfortable. Your parents can leave you at home alone. They can even ask you to look after your brother and sister. They can 
they can leave you alone at school and know that you'll stay there where they left you and all that. So you are accountable, but the thing left is that individuals all walk with Jesus. Now this is not a preaching uh, thing, so if you've got any questions, stop me, ask, and be interactive. But also, there's a lot of people who's baptized here, and they maybe thought they just came to support your No, They were also tell us when they got baptized, how did they feel? How did they feel when, like me, I got baptized when I was about 22 or 23. And my sister got baptized because she saw me getting baptized. But it was me who felt, I can't go any longer. I, I also was young at that time and said, no, I won't get baptized now. Let me see what's in the world, what are we going to do. But it's not, you'll come re later on, you'll realize that it's something you need to do. It's something you want to You'll find that in the world won't give you no satisfaction. But then you, you'll also want to get a closer walk with God. Now I want to give you scriptures why we baptize. So you must be no doubt in your mind that when you're getting baptized that you're doing it the right way. It wasn't tell you because Brother Brennan said you to do it. I'm going to tell you because Brother Nemi told you to do it. I'm going to tell you because all the rest of us and your father and your mother and your parents did it. That's why you must know. You must be convinced in your mind that the Bible tells me that we're doing it the right way because there's a lot of people who's baptized in Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And they feel it's right. There's a lot of people who sprinkle it. They think it's right. A lot of people who were forced to be baptized. And they said now, and they carried on their lives as they was before they got baptized. So I want to show you why we follow the steps. And why we, the, 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 the support from the Bible to, to support us in what we do. So you mustn't have any doubt in your mind that it's because... But an enemy taught Sean them and Jerome them, and now they're doing the same thing, they're following a custom. And they follow Brother Brandon. No, we follow what the Bible said us to do. And Brother Brandon becomes our guide because 2,000 years ago was a long time, things have changed. So we needed a prophet to give us the up to date version, take the old customs and traditions, how it was, and refresh it to give us up to date what's happening. So if you go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, it says, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and whatsoever things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So it says, Go therefore and teach all nations, so you teach them, Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So I must teach you all things, and then I must baptize you. So after I've teach you, I mustn't just take you and force you to get baptized. I must teach you why you must be baptized. What's the benefits of being baptized? Why do you, the church believe in baptism? Why does the message people believe in baptism? Why Christians believe in baptism? And then you must be satisfied in your mind that I'm doing it because the Bible and God told me to do these things. Here. And how you must feel before you get baptized. So in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 it says, Whatsoever you do in the word. So first, that's the most of the denomination people say, Jesus said, baptize in Father and in Son and in Holy Ghost. So now why are you telling me what Paul said and what Peter said and what uh, all these other men said? Why are you not listening to what Jesus said? Because Jesus is supposed to be the ultimate if Jesus said, why are you telling me what Paul said? Why are you telling me what Peter said? Why are you telling me what other Philip said? Why can't you follow what Jesus said? Remember, Jesus never wrote any of the books. Jesus wrote nothing. It was authors that wrote on behalf of Jesus. So even if that is their theory that Jesus said, but actually it wasn't Jesus said, it was what Matthew said according to what he heard Jesus say. It was so, if they say that it's direct Jesus said, Technically, it's not what Jesus, but we know that Jesus said it. But what he was saying is, those are titles. And we'll come to that later on. So I must also very, uh, tell you why we don't believe in baptizing in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So here, yeah, the first thing for that against the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost theory is, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So it says, anything you do in word or in deed. Now if I take you, and I hold you, 
and we put you in the water and you felt that cold water and you came up and everybody was singing songs after that and congratulating you and then we had some snacks and all that. What were we doing? It was a deed, wasn't it? We weren't saying words. I, we physically took you in the water and we baptized you. So anything you do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if baptism was a deed, we have to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As praying, we pray, say oh, that's words, and we end always in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Acts 22, 16 says, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So, why are you waiting? It says, why are you tearing? Arise and be baptized. So if you've got that feeling that you need to get baptized, that's why as soon as you tell us you want to get baptized, we'll make sure the first available time we can suitable to you, we baptize. You won't wait until you six months from now the weather is good. No, pouring rain, what sunshine, anything. Jerome is willing to go in the water. <laughs> no, he's a bus. Then we go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 22. And it says, But the scripture concluded, all under sin. So everybody is a sinner. Preacher, prophet, everybody is a sinner. So it says, the scripture concluded that all are under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus might be given to them that believe. So if you believe in Jesus, we all, so cut that out that you're holier than thou, everybody is a sinner. But it says, the faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe, only to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, so under the law of Moses, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Remember what uh, Moses said, obey, obey, do, obey, obey. So that was the schoolmaster. And then if you did anything wrong, you took a lamb, you went to the altar, you slaughtered it, and you burnt it as an offering. So that was the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we may be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under schoolmaster. So now, I don't have to come and tell you, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do that, don't do that. The schoolmaster is gone away. Now you don't do it because why? You love Jesus. Why should I hurt him? He died for me. I realize now, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And then I do it voluntarily. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to carry on coming here and tell me, you do. I saw you doing this. I saw you there. Why you don't smoke cigarettes? No, I don't have to do that for you because you don't need a schoolmaster anymore. Faith is come now. And he says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Now there's a one. For as many of you have been baptized unto Christ, have put on Christ. So if you're not baptized, you haven't put on Christ as yet. So there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor no female, for you are all one in Christ. So if we're all one in Christ, there's only one way. And then he says that you have to be baptized and put on the name of Christ. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So first, you be baptized into Christ. Then you put on Christ. Everybody must put on Christ. And if you want to be Abraham's seed, and heaven you want to be your inheritance, as I said, the seeds according to Abraham, and you, you want that inheritance and be Christ, you have to start the first step is baptism. First Peter 3, verse 20, it says, Would sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Remember, the ark stayed. It, ne it, it never closed. It told him, come into the ark, come into the ark, come. Never listen. When the rain came and God closed the door, it was too late. So he says, long suffering. There's coming a day when there's going to be no more grace. While the ark was preparing, was a preparing within, within wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Remember, only Noah's family. The light figure whereunto to even baptism dot also now save us, not putting away of the fruit of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is gone to heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So it says here yeah, that we're baptism and it's not putting away 
of the fruit of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience. That now, that's why we told you, you'll make the decision yourself. Now my conscience, I've seen what's in the world, doesn't attract me. I've been in church. Maybe first you were dragging your leg to come to church. Your parents say, hey, we want you ready. Eight o'clock, we leave it. And you didn't want to smile, we can't sleep late on Sunday. Why do we have to go Thursday to church? Why do we have to listen to these DVDs all the time and all that? But then slowly, slowly, you start getting used to it, you start enjoying it. Sometimes you are depressed, you hear it, you hear the word of God, you read the scriptures, it makes sense to you, you're happy, you're enjoying it, you're, listen, you're, you're reading the, the, uh, all the experiences of people in the Bible and you can relate to it, you start to understand. And then you realize that this Christian life is for me. I mean, it's part of me. And then you say, that's what he says, not because you, you want to be. There's a lot of people I know, a lot of other religions, very clean living people. You can't put a finger on their life. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't use jewelry, they don't uh, dye their hair, they don't do a lot of things, don't use makeup, and a lot of things even far better than we do. But yet, it's not putting away, but it's a good clean conscience in it's towards God. Now, Mark 16, verse 16, it says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Then I finished my argument there. So there's only one way if you want to go and be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And if you don't believe, you are damned. John 3, verse 5 says, And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the first part, you have to be born by the water. But it's not the only part and of the Spirit. So there's two parts to it. First, you get baptized. You, you say you're giving up all the things of the world. You die, kill you in the water. That old self is dead, will bring you up anew. But then you have to be filled. Like the prophet gave that example, take a dirty bottle. It was in the mud, in the dirt, sanctifi uh, sancti uh, justification. Somebody saw that bottle in the dirt, took it out. So the dirt is still on the bottle, but it's out from surrounded by the dirt. Then sanctification, he took it, put it under a tap, he started washing it, put some hand in the end, uh, some like liquid, wash it up nicely, now it's clean. Now it's still empty. You can put anything you want to in it. You can put poison in it, you can put something that uh, kills the insects, and you drink it and you can die. Oh, I can put nice juice in it. I can put nice water. I can fill it with something valuable as well. So you are empty after being baptized. You need the Spirit of God to come and fill it. So that's the three parts where we say justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Something needs to fill that space. Now, in Romans chapter 6, no questions up till now. Very good in teaching. Remember, if you fail your exams, no problem, you can write again. Fail the standard, no problem, you can write again. But if you fail this one, no eternal life for you. So, if you've got a question, answer. Ask us, sorry. If I can't answer, Marcus and Jerome will help me. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that the grace may abound? You know, in your heart, Jesus Christ died for you. He'll help me when I'm sinning, everything like that. But if you know that, why you want to carry on doing the wrong things and let grace to carry on uh, abounding for you? So he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Lord, you died for me, so me, I'll carry on doing as I please. Let your blood carry on helping me. No, if you've come to a place as a grown, mature Christian, now you need to say, Lord, your grace got me where I need to be. Now, I need to stand on my stand on this grace. He says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than him? If you die to the sin, why do you want to carry on staying there? Move on, he says. No, you not. That so many of us were baptized into Jesus to his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. And like as Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So if you want resurrection, you can't get it until you die. Jesus could not 
res uh, resurrect from the grave until they killed him on the cross. Like a seed, that seed must die first and rot. Then only the new village plant can come or the new mango plant can come. But first it has to die. So if you don't die, you're not going to resurrect. Okay, so knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. And if you want to, you get baptized so that sin don't have no more dominion over you. For he then he died, he died unto sin once. But that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon you also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you saw, I never quoted Brother Brandon once. I've never told you anything. I'm only giving you scriptures. Maybe boring, but I want you to see that I'm only telling you scriptures in the Bible. So, if your friend from another denomination, if he believes the Bible, then he has to. <coughs> I never told. They'll say, no, you you believe a prophet. You're believing this. No, I never told you nothing about the prophet. I'm only telling you what the Bible said. So, I want you to know that everything we do, we followed the Bible. First John chapter five and verse six, he says. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are, there, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth. The spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So it's telling you here in 1 John 5 that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there's a witness that bed in heaven, there's a witness that bed in earth. So it's telling you the three things, the, those three are one. And then the prophet now says in the, in the book Water Baptism, written in 59, paragraph 33, If Jesus commanded them to be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and the Father is not a name, and Son is not a name, and Holy Ghost is not a name, we better go back and find out who Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is, and what's its name. Now, I'm quoting you a, 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 what Brother Brennan says, but it's not really what he said. It's a question you all should ask. If the other churches are right, and we, what, make, what makes us think we're right? Because they believe they're right as well. What makes us believe? So he's asking the question, which you should ask too. Don't take our word for it. We say, we're baptizing you in Jesus' name. It's your eternal life we're playing with. You need to ask me, Sean or Brother uh, Jerome, Brother Nabi, whoever, you tell me why not baptizing in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said it. Why are you saying us to baptize in Jesus' name? And the question even Brother Brennan is asking again. Yeah? So if you say, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, so he's telling you, father is not a name, because Jerome is a father. I can't say I'm a father because I don't have no children. So Jordan can call him father, but I can't call him father because, but it's an office that he holds. But being Jerome, he also holds another office as a colleague at work. He also, when Brother Sadie comes, he call him, uh, he can call him son. Yet he's the same person. He can't call him son because he's his father. And when Brother Darren and Brother Dion come, they'll call him brother. We can also call him brother because he's in the church as well. But you see, different people, but he's the same person. To uh, his wife, his husband. He can't be a husband to anybody else because that's the title to her. And it depends who you are to God, your relationship, and that's how you see him. Because we needed Jesus Christ as a savior. In the Old Testament, they didn't need because they had their uh, sacrifice as their thing. So they needed the Father. Now when Jesus died, he already came and he did the work. We needed his spirit now. The same one, we needed the spirit now to guide us and be our comforter after he's gone. So it's the same one 
working in different offices according to how you need it. God says, God so great came down and gave you how you need it, packaged it for you how you need it at that time. So if you say I'm baptizing you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who is that? Because Jerome is father, his son, his brother, his work colleague, his husband, his everything, but he's still Jerome. The name we use is still Jerome. So Jerome, as the name, is everything. His son, his father, his brother, but it's Jerome. That's what we say. We say Jesus Christ. All those offices that he holds is the name that we, we put him under. Amen. So when you say the name of Jesus Christ, I cover Father, I cover Son, I cover Holy Ghost, I cover everything in one, because that is, as I say, if I say Jerome, I'm saying his father, I'm saying her husband, I'm saying, uh, brother, saying his son, I'm saying Brother Darren's brother, all in one with their one name. Now, John chapter 10 and verse 30 says, I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again, again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because thou being a man, makest thyself God. So Jesus said it there. I am my father one. Now you believe when Jesus said, Baptize in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, he's saying, I am my father is one. So we already took out that <coughs> father and son is the same one. Then we go to Luke chapter 3 and verse 21. It says, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was opened. Even Jesus himself. So there was a time. So you can on it. And the Holy Ghost descended in a body shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. So we can take it for a fact that there was a time when Jesus didn't have the Holy Ghost. He had to get baptized in order to get the Holy Ghost. So you see, even he had to follow the same procedure as a man on earth. So if he had to do it, what about you? How are you going to receive this Holy Spirit if you don't get baptized? Because even there, in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, it says Jesus had to do it. And once he got baptized, then the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove. So there was a time he didn't have the Holy Ghost, and he knew I have to get baptized to get the Holy Ghost. So it should be an example to us as well. John chapter 14 and verse 10, it says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The works that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So it says, I am in the Father. So first I told you, Jesus said, I am my Father one. Now it's saying, the Father in me. So that's the Father now is in the Son. So we cancel both out. He's saying I'm in the Father. Now he's saying the Father is in me. So Father and Son have got the same. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So first Jesus is saying, I am my Father one. So the Son is saying I'm like the Father. Then now this Father is saying now the Father is working in me. Everything I'm talking is the Father speaking through me. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So, who was that child there? Holy Ghost. So now I've even told you that. So it's I am the father, father in me. And now before even she can have the child, the child was found of the Holy Ghost. So all are together. Matthew 18, 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two or more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Now, fine, I've told you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is one. But I need to give you two or three witnesses, because that's the law of God. So I told you in the New Testament, Matthew 18, 66, two or three witnesses must bear. So me talking and telling it to you, I gave you some examples of where Jesus is saying that I am the Father, Father in me, Holy Spirit was upon him, Holy Spirit descended upon him. This is not good enough. I must give you two or three witnesses. Deuteronomy 19, 15, one witness shall not rise up against a man for an inquiry, for an iniquity, or for any sin. In any sin that he sinned, at the mouth of two witnesses, 
by the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So I need to give you three witnesses that baptize in the name of Jesus to show you that we're following the right way. So witnesses baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. So there's three P's whenever we, we, we look at this here. Peter alone was given the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16 verse 19. Remember how they said, I give, Jesus gave him the keys to give him. And he used his keys entrusted to him to open up for the Jews. So Peter is the one with the keys open for the Jews. Acts 2, 22 to 41. For the Samaritan, remember the Jews, they always say this. Believers, people are always categorized in three groups. Believers, make believers, unbelievers. Jews, Samaritans, Gentiles. So Jews is the, the, the true uh, lineage of Abraham. Samaritans is a half mix of Gentiles. For a this barbarians who don't believe in God and all those things. Eh? So the Jews, Acts 2, 22 to 41, he opened for the Jews. For the Samaritans, Acts 8, 14 to 17. And for the Gentiles, Acts 10, 34 to 38. So he had the key, God gave him the key, he opened, opened, opened. Now everybody has access to it. And the opportunity to re receive God's gift, God's spirit, with a view to their entering into the heavenly kingdom. So what is number one? Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So Peter said it. Remember, he's the one with the key. Open, open, open. Then he's the one says, in the name of Jesus Christ. So my first witness. Acts 10, 30. And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house and behold a man stood before me in bright clothing. And he said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. And then arms I had I had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast as well done that thou, thou art come. Now therefore we are all here present before God to hear all things that have commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of the truth, I perceive that God is no respect of persons. Remember, these are Gentiles. Jews hated them. They thought they were unclean. They were heathens. They were all the things. And even Peter didn't want to even go to their house. But it says here that God is no respect of persons. So if he called you, I'm not the one to judge. Lord. If God called you, I must be there. But in every nation, he that feared him and worked righteousness is accepted with him. And he's all, he says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them who heard the word. And they of the circumcision, talk about the Jews, which believed, were astonished. This thing never happened. God never worked with these Gentiles before. They are heathens. They are unclean. And they were shocked that, hey, this same God that's working for us is also working for these people too. The Holy Ghost that we've got, they're getting it as well. Before baptism, remember now. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also were poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? The same Holy Ghost we've got. These people already got it. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they unto him, Tarry certain days. So it shows that as soon as. You have to get baptized to get the Holy Ghost, but there was an exception that these people, when they got the, the Holy Ghost, it convinced them, hey, we need to get baptized immediately. Acts 8, 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they may come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, for they were only baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, there's another lot of people here. They got baptized and they're waiting. And then they sent Paul and uh, Peter and John to them now to pray for them and preach to them so they can receive the Holy Ghost. But remember what they said? 
They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we can take it for granted that Peter was a person that was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then he laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying of, of the apostles' hands on the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. This is another Simon. He was so excited about it, he was giving them money for it. Saying, give me also this power that on whosoever I lay hands, they will receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee, because thou hast sought the gift of God may be purchased with money. So this baptism and you receiving the Holy Ghost is something freely given to you. You don't have to pay for it. Witness number 2, Acts 8.26 An angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south, unto the way that go down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is, in, is a desert. And he rose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, and a Candace, king of Ethiopia, carried, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the saint said unto Philip, the, then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. And Philip read to the to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understand thou what thou readest. So we've been telling you all the time, get baptized in Jesus' name, get baptized. But do you understand? So even this man, he read it. Yeah, I'm showing you a lot of scriptures. It may be boring, but I'm showing it to you. So you must know that everything we do is scripturally bound. So here, yeah, this man was reading the scripture, but he didn't understand. Why? Why are you taking me to water and dumping me all those? But he, he wasn't reading that now. He's reading a science now. As you, maybe you read all these things, but you don't really understand. Somebody need to come and teach it to you. So he says, he says, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he should come and sit with him. The place of the scripture where he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and a lamb down before the shearer. So open not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or some other man? And Philip opened his mouth and began, to, began at the same scripture and preached unto him, Jesus. And as they were on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What would hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And he went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So there's the second guy, alone, busy trying to read the word, didn't understand. Once he understood, immediately he said, There's water. What, why, why is it stopping me from getting baptized? Once you're convinced, make a decision. And witness number three, and it came to pass that while Apollo was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So they believed. And then he's asking them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So we believe, but we've never heard about Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, What then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Remember, John is baptizing before Jesus came. So, and then Paul said, John verily baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So they believed, but they believed something that John the Baptist preached before Jesus. So he said you were baptized, but it's not right. So many times you may be even thinking, yeah, so what's wrong? They baptized, I'm baptized. They believe in the Bible, I believe in the Bible. They believe in Jesus, so they baptized Father, Son. But this, yeah. Paul saying, you were baptized, fine enough, but it's not right. Go get baptized again. It's Jesus' name, so only the right way. Galatians 2 19. For I thought the law am for the law am dead, but for through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ within liveth in me. 
the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me, gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. So if following the law, you can don't get baptized, but just be a good person. Don't do the wrong things at all. But there's he says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ died in vain. And if you believe Jesus Christ died for you, then he didn't die in vain. So it says, Romans 8, 9, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that rose up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwells in you. Peter 1.30 Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind and be sober, and hope unto the end for grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Ignorance is you don't know the wrong thing, and you do the wrong thing. The idiot is, he knows the wrong thing and he still goes and does it. So you were ignorant. You didn't know it was wrong and you did it. But he says, but he which had called you is holy. So you, hold, you be you holy in all men of conversation. Because it is written, be you holy for I am holy. And this says, the prophet says, I know my redeemer liveth. 38. On this Easter morning, why don't you raise your hand and say, Lord, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I am. And when that pool opens at 11 o'clock, I'm going to be right in that water too. I'm going down for baptism so I can be raised in the newness of life to walk with you. Lord, I want to look past the curtain of time. I want to have an experience right now on this Easter morning that I can say any time through life, yes, I was sitting at an old block tabernacle on beautiful Easter morning. God raised up the curtain. I looked in the past. I seen my church didn't mean very much. I seen there was nothing on earth that meant much to me anymore. There I sold out everything I had. I bought the pearl of great price. I accepted Jesus as my savior. I now raise my hand, Lord, be merciful to me, for I want to look past the curtain of time. I want eternal life. So it's going to come. every one of your life, there should come a time where you say, I want to be dead to the world. As I've showed you scriptures, I don't want these things anymore. And then you're going to say, I want to show the world as Brother Wesley shows the world who he support. That tomorrow he can't go deny it now. Because Liverpool lost and he said, no, I don't support you. No, we know you support because your actions showed it. And so tomorrow you go to church, what it took you out, nothing, you drive yourself up and put new clothes on and finish. But in your heart, it's a work that's already been done. You've already dead to the world, now you're just showing everyone. I'm showing you what I've done in my heart. Tested faith produces goods. It's for you to look and live. It's you. It's nothing I can do. A preacher, if he comes here and preaches divine healing by laying on hands, he'd have to preach that to you out of the word. He'd have to preach that to you. His hands laying on you wouldn't be no more than baptism or anything else. He'll, you have to have faith. If you haven't got faith, you just go down a dry sinner and come up a wet one. You're still a sinner if your heart hasn't been changed. The baptism means nothing, just an outward expression that an inward work of grace has been done. And no matter how many times preachers lay their hands on you, how much they do this, it doesn't mean a thing till you really believe it. That's why I said baptism, the most important decision you have to make. It's nobody else. Preachers, whoever, whoever, no, nothing to do with it. It's all about you. And he can baptize you 10 times, you go and dry, come back wet, finish. End of the story, you go back to, like they say, a pig going back to the wallow. But, because it's nature, it's a pig. You can take the pig, as a brother said, put nice perfume on it, put nice clothes on it, take it inside the house, put it in the air condition. As soon as you open the door, it'll run in the mud. Because his nature is to go to the mud. That's why you need to die to those things. Yes, it is. We're very prone to encourage people to be baptized in Christian baptism, knowing that it is essential unto salvation. For it is written by our Lord, his last commission, his last commission to the church, as he commissioned the, the church last, he said, 
go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we know that it is essential that we are baptized by mercy. And we and we'll be happy to render the service to you as I can even put Brother Jerome on the block and say he's happy to render the service to you, cold water or not, to anyone who is, is convinced in the heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he died to save sinners, and you were one that he died to save. As I told you, we all are sinners saved by the grace of God. I showed you the scripture of it. Now the prophet is saying that if you believe you're a sinner, and that Jesus Christ died for you, and you were the one that he, he died to save, <laughs> And would like to come and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, saying to the world that you believe that your sins are remitted, that you are now going to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus to take your stand. So until you do that, you are not a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, I've given you all the scriptures. I've given you witnesses. I like some people who baptize to give us any experiences that they've had when they were in the world. And baptized about Lord. Brother Nemi was preaching and preaching oh, like how y'all are. We were sitting there at 12, 13. I was. I remember if you all saw Brother uh, Krishna he came a few weeks ago. And he was 23 at that time when I was about 12 or 13. And Brother Nemi said, What's a good age to get baptized? He said, 23. And we were, Oh, this old guy here, he said. <laughs> and then when I was reaching 23, I said, Hey, we were laughing at him. And now now we're getting to that age. And I lost my job in white hairs. And I was working in Nando's that time. And Marcus used to come and buy Nando's when he was going to visit. <laughs> <In Maryland. laughs> he was a great guy. He should, your young guys need to learn from Marcus. He used to take nice Nando's roll and go to see his girlfriend at that time. And I wish I could be like him and like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it, and, and at that time, you started to think now. Job was born, I was here. Whether I'm going to get another job, then you started to see the hand of God in your life. Then you need to see what if I go anywhere else and get a job somewhere else? I was thinking of going overseas and all these things. But I remembered all this teaching that I went through, went through, and I saw all the things that I did in the world and all the things that friends that we had in the world, where they are. Now, maybe today you might say we were forced to come in the message because our parents came in the message. So I came. And then you might say it's old fashioned and all that. I like to tell you. Maybe Jordan might say, uh, Jerome is not very stylish and fashionable at all. But I remember when Jerome was Jordan's age, he maybe thought Brother Stegi is not uh, stylish. And to me, Brother Stegi is the most stylish man I ever saw in my life. And the shoes are all how we dress up is what we saw him wearing with the day when we grew up. We want to look like Brother Stegi. But he was not taught when he was younger. You know, did you think your father was stylish when you were, when you were Jordan's age? And Jordan, how may we think again? Jerome, no, he's not very stylish. But I can tell you, when, Jerome, when you come to Jerome's age, we might say, you know, stylish Jordan was playing drums when he was so young, Jordan. Hey, we wish we were like him when we was his age. And then maybe his son may say, no. But it's like that. You, you come to an age where you realize what my parents did. And if you look at the people in the church, how young they look compared to the people in the world of the same age. Look at Brother Demi, 70. Look at other people who are 70 in their face. And especially look at the sisters, older sisters and all in the church. Look at their faces and look at their, 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 their character. You will see grumpy old people outside looking very old. I can show you people that just 57, 58, you think they're 100 and something. We just managing to push them into promote, to pension. We say, well, no, you can't last anymore. Rather, let's fill the forms. We will. Then, the other day, I went to the vegetable shop there by uh, Rockies. And their sister-in-law is one year smaller than me. And the sister says, hey, what are you? You're older than my sister, but my sister is going to get bonded off. She can't work anymore. Still has bonding off. She's retiring. And say, how oh, are you still working? And still my sister is feeling everything how? But you see, God will keep you. Yeah, God will keep you. You why you want to get as uh, brother Kaitri did so, why you want to get the scars of the world? Your parents already did it and they brought you here. They gave you a step ahead in life. Now you need to make a decision. Do you want? You want to taste the drugs, you want to taste the alcohol, you want to do the things for yourself. But as the prophet said for his son, the further you go, you're still going to come back. But the further you go, the harder it is to come back. You're going to see all those things, you're going to experience all those things, and you're going to suffer. And you'll come back crawling. Whereas you can, you're still going to get to the same place. 
at the same time, if God is, is chosen you, you'll never go. No matter what you try to do, but the only thing will happen to you is you'll suffer. Anybody want to give an experience? Even if you've got a suit. <laughs> Anybody? Oh, I must send the mic around. They're tired of hearing what because I can gave them the scriptures, but they don't mean so much as somebody telling how you felt. How you, even Marcus, if he's trying to hide in the back, I can see him from here. <laughs> There's no more slides here. You can tell something to the young people. See, I'm lost in the air to come. <laughs> Come, some people are watching it. <laughs> and I can't like this man wasn't amazing. Never to buy pot, to buy food by pot. <laughs> and around the night, I never gave him any extra chicken anytime. I feel bad about it in that too now. Amen. I wish you all the wonderful name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thought I had a contact there at Nando's. I the phone my order through the car window today. I said, can I speak to Sean? He's the manager. I place my order. When I get there, it was made to the team. And Sunday, I used to go to a battle and sit and tell him to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and then those were the days. And at that time, when I was going to get baptized and do all of those things, I did it because I wanted to be over there at that time. And I'm sure many of you might have that thing to do there for that person. But I can say, once you get baptized and you do it for the correct reason, and after God comes into your life, you don't do it for the other person anymore. Yes. You come with your own accord. It's your own personal revelation for God. Amen. And I'm so glad that I can be in church tonight. After all these years, I'm coming to Donna Tabernacle now for 20 years full now. Yes. And uh, it's good that I can say, I'm not coming to please my wife. Yeah. I'm not coming to please Pastor Nami, Brother Jerome, or my class boy. <laughs> I was so happy when I saw my class boy here when I came to this church, Sean was here. And uh, when I was with him in school, he, was, he wasn't like that, he was naughty, his name was Stompy. <laughs> but I'm so proud to be associated with him and I tell everybody, hey, I'm so glad my class boy is a, is a minister, he's a teacher, and I'm so happy to be associated with him, amen. And uh, we are in the right place. Uh, I won't say uh, it's because we're in Tonga Tabernacle. No, it's because of the ministry of the of the prophet. Amen. That we are. We know who we are at this time. Amen. I'm so glad that we have got the scriptures open up to us. We know why we are going to be doing the baptism. Amen. Why we go to Acts 2:38. Amen. He explained it through all the scriptures. We're not following a man. Amen. He used all the scriptures. Amen. And uh, when you make your decision, amen, make sure you take it knowing what's in store and do it for the right reasons. And I don't know who's going to come next now. I think Brother Rishi, who's when he got baptized, was a big flag up there. He's got a testimony as well. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you. People told that we could see the people were understanding that how you felt, why you did it. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we were new in the message, we were very naughty people. My wife will tell you, we don't lie, parties, drinking, all that. But uh, there was a time when we had to take a stand with the Lord's help, spirit. I remember that day was the last day that I even touched alcohol was we came from uh, I think it was Easter it was a New Year's it was a service we came from Tonga Tabernacle and they were having a party at my brother's house and they poured the alcohol and brought it to us to have and you know what in my heart something you told me you know what it's finished and that's it yeah and that was last, and then we finally took a decision, the wife and I, that we know, we said it's time for us to get baptized. Uh, most of all, we wanted God in our life. 
because I think in our previous uh, being a Hindu, there are a lot of questions that uh, we used to ask. Like I used to always ask my dad, uh, we believe in reincarnation. But every year you'll do this prayer, you'll take out food and stuff for, for the dead. If you believe in reincarnation, why are you taking out food? Mm. Because they are reborn, so there shouldn't be anything such as that. But he couldn't give us an answer. No one had a straight answer, basically, for us that time. So, but in the message, there's a question, there's always an answer for you. Yeah. So, we know in the right place, we see the Lord, the Lord working with us. And uh, I just wanted to bring, I just, all my, all, all is my desire is to get closer to you every day. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> We also baptize sisters, do you know? We don't want to baptize the brothers. Joro, will you say something? While he's going, I'll tell you about my father. My father was a rough guy. Maybe you've seen him now. Heavy alcoholic. <laughs> I remember recently, I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> we went for one uh, function. Somebody died, his brother died, as he said, some connections here. And they didn't know I'm his son, but I was telling them, he said, hey, this, look at him, how nice he is. You know how big Changkati was? <laughs> <laughs> Always fell down and all that. And look at him there, how nice he is, and all that. He's still looking young and all that. But look at how big alcoholic he was. I don't know where he was, where they're doing it, or they soon remember him as an alcoholic. And he said he used to drink, drink, drink. Not, he used to drink to pass out and smoke a lot. And then, he never liked Christianity. I even remember recently, I think when people, Christians come to the house, to offer us what this is, or his sister, he said, I always remember what my brother told me, how to deal with these people who get rid of them from the house, and he's actually, he can't say what he said. He was an unbeliever in order, how you get rid of Christian people if they come to your house, and all that. I was saying, I remember what my brother told me, I tell them that to get rid of them, but he's acting now, because that's how he was that time in the world. But one day, God spoke to him at work. And I can still remember I was small at that time. I was going to Sunday school already before I was the first one to go to church in my house. And then he came but he said, no. Somebody spoke to him at work and said, Jesus is away. And he felt hot and he was sweaty. And he came home being a staunch Hindu. And he came and he said, we have to go to church now. And immediately he, he took a decision. Stop smoking, drinking, everything. He tried to give it up many times and couldn't, but when he came to church and he's never touched it, <clears throat> now we're going about 40 something years. Mm. Anyone else want to say something? No. We're handing it over. They were waiting for the Nandos from Brother Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> they were just closed, but just before I close, who can tell me which scripture refers to being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Since you don't answer questions, we'll answer questions. So we're going to see you look like you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Who scripture tells us be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Jordan? Looks like we need to ensure the drumsticks. Say, <laughs> you're laughing. What scripture tells us? <laughs> So we have been nice Sean spent so much of time preparing, studying, putting all these notes together, praying about it. It's for a reason. We don't just come here to just share this knowledge, or we don't just come to have a service, but we place so much value upon our soul, upon our life, that we take this initiative. Not that we don't have anything to do, but everybody got stuff to do, but we lay aside all this and make the sacrifice so you all can come and you all can be blessed and you all can have eternal life. We try to set the way straight for you all so you all don't go aside and go astray and make the mistakes that the older people made like Sister Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> so when we got baptized, I remember we was also naughty growing up. Growing up in the message, we grew up born in the message. Our parents were very staunch in what they believed. They didn't force religion down our throats, no. But they were strict in what they believed. So they didn't believe to watch TV. We didn't have TV in the house. We grew up around a TV in the house. We didn't want, uh, my father didn't uh, allow us to listen to worldly music. Not didn't allow us, 
But whenever he was around, he didn't want the playing. And we grew up, being a young boy, I'll be honest with you, we listen to this world of music, we want to be like the cool kids. But that's not being cool. Because we don't realize, at that time, you're enjoying the music, you're enjoying, Satan will come and he'll give you a catchy tune. And you notice how we can sing church songs and we can sing it for months and years, over and over. Like we sing still, and we still sing the words wrong. But you hear one worldly song, and that song is stuck in your head. You already know the words, so you hear it playing somewhere, and it just catches on. The devil tries and catches us with catchy things. It maybe seems catchy, but subconsciously our spirit is opening up to that. So when we're coming to that, growing up, we listen to all those things, and it wasn't, we didn't think about it then, but now we think what it opened us up to. And when we got married and stuff, so we still continued, and then... Shivani and I decided to get baptized together. And I think we did tell the story so many times, but we'll tell it for the youth as well. So we used to watch TV, had a TV, you know, Shivani used to, coming from an unbelieving family, so we used to do all those things and we decided to get baptized. And at that time, Pastor Nami phoned us and told us he's coming to speak to us at the monastery. So we took the TV and we hid it in the room. <laughs> and we closed the door. Because we know he's coming as a minister there. <laughs> and then he's speaking now, and this minister began speaking, and he says, you know, when you're getting baptized, it's a serious thing. So we've got to confess our sins. So even when you're getting baptized, you need to confess your sins. We don't just do it for making the people happy, or the pastor happy, like Brother Sean said, but we do it because it's our confession to Christ. And Brother Nami came, and they began speaking to us, and he says, you, mu you must clean up your heart and don't leave anything behind closed doors. And the TV was behind the closed doors. <laughs> and it was, God was speaking to us at that time, you know, and when they went through, we just, Shivani and I just looked at each other and we started laughing. But we said, how, how are we going to live this life? Or what, sometimes this calling is, we don't do these things because the message say do and don't. But we do it because we love Christ. And when we decided to get baptized, I tell you, from the time we went into the water and we came out, all the worldly desires was gone. It was not the water that was cleansed us, but it's us responding to the word, saying, Lord, we're willing to go in the water. And I still told her, we'll go to the water, the Lord will take us and see us through. Mm -hmm. And like he took us in the water and he came out, he's taken on all the desires. Sometimes you may be facing desires in school, you may be facing certain things that's not of God, or maybe worldly influence. But you say, Lord, I'm going to surrender my body to you, surrender my mind, my soul to you. So when we get baptized, we're surrendering ourselves to God. Even older people, we're surrendering ourselves to God because it's the work that he has done for us on Calvary. So when we get baptized, it's a, it's a life, it's a decision that we're making to say, Lord, I, surrender, I acknowledge what you have done for me. Now I'm surrendering myself to you. Like you died for us, now we are dying off to the world. And he says, like Christ was resurrected, we are resurrected with him now when we rise up. When we go into the water, we come up, we come up a new person. You see, so it's a life that's calling and it's changing us from glory to glory. So who can get baptized? Who is eligible to get baptized? Arya? Accountable age. age. So sometimes we, we feel... Some people, kids get baptized from 12 years and stuff, but we discourage that because you're still a child, you're growing up, and it can cause also, when you get baptized at a very early age, what happens is now your parents will put pressure on you, you're baptized, but it's supposed to come from within. The Holy Spirit starts to act within us, and what happens many times is, like we heard the ministers were saying, I don't uh, show if you remember, when they said a young boy got baptized, and he's know that he's baptized, now he go to school, and maybe he gets involved in a fight or something. There was a discussion going on. And they say he gets involved with the fight. And now he, he gets involved and now he feels he no longer has the Holy Ghost. Or he feels he's being scarred or uh, uh, pushed aside. And that can cause more damage to a young person. So when we come to an age of accountability, preferably 16 and onwards or maybe a little <laughs> older, when you understand that now Christ has died for you, now you're going to surrender your life. And he says, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. You see, so even in Matthew, it tells us, uh, Father is not a name, Son is not a name, Holy Spirit is not a name. Those are just titles, like in a son, like the Sean says, son and brother and all those things are just titles. But there's a name, you take on the name of Christ, amen.
can you can sing one song and we'll close.